<laughs> my saying is you're already at zero and you can't go less. So trying mm -hmm. is not going to take you less than zero. This is the Bold Artist Podcast. You have answers and you're expressing them in your art. Your art is important and it needs to be seen. Welcome, and let's get started with today's episode. Welcome to the Bold Artist Podcast. In today's episode, we interview Trisha Faulkner of Nashville, Tennessee, USA. Trisha is a highly educated professional. She's a pharmacist and a realtor, and she was willing to put that away to pursue her passion of paint. She has an incredible story, a journey to share with us, and even shares insight on how moving so many times in her lifetime has contributed to her growing confidence. Let's go right on over to the interview and meet bold artist, Trisha Faulkner. Welcome to the show, Trisha. Hello, thank you so much for the introduction. Thank you for having me on the show. We're so happy to have you here and I'd love it if you start out today's show by sharing with us a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, well I currently live in Nashville, Tennessee. I have moved about 36 times in my life. From, wow, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> right, uh, from all sorts of cities like um, Alabama, New Orleans, Phoenix, I even lived in England for three years, South Carolina, Georgia, and uh, I just found myself back here in, uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. Wow. And I've lived here, thankfully, for 15 years. <laughs> yeah, you've lived quite adventurously, and I'm sure yes. that has a big role in your bold character. <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> that is true. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your bold character and being a bold color painter. Um, I started off early in life um, as a really hard worker. I grew up a lot on the farm at my grandparents every summer. But uh, when I decided it was time to go to college, I went to school to be a pharmacist. Um, I have always drawn. I don't know if growing up early in New Orleans had anything to do with that. But um, I was always able to just pick up a pen or a pencil and draw uh, cartoon characters, people sitting in front of me. I could draw them in about 10 minutes. Wow. So, yeah, thank you. So, yeah. um, when I got to college, it was just, um, I thought, I don't know if I can ever pass chemistry. And then I realized chemistry is just drawing and drawing mechanisms and the shapes and how they bond and how the chemicals bond. And then I accentuated that into the body and even made charts for some of the professors on how to then use art to teach courses. And it's just been a part of who I've always been. Wow. So it sounds like you really yeah. learned visually. You made that uh, connection. Very visual. <laughs> yeah, you made <laughs> that sure. connection between science and art. That's remarkable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I, I hear that you have done a very interesting art project, like a scientific art project. Is Do I have that story right? Where you made like 3D uh, renders <laughs> for a scientific project? Right, I would do drug mechanisms and how they worked in the body and uh, show how they would, you know, open up and the chemicals would bond into the cells or to the uh, re re receptors on the cells and that's how the drugs take it into the body. So I've, I've done a lot of that and uh, as a pharmacist, I would teach my patients who didn't understand, for example, why do I need to take this medication for blood sugar? I would draw a sugar molecule and, and show them that it's too big to fit through your capillary. That's why <laughs> you're losing your eyesight. You can't you can't have all that sugar. <laughs> so, wow. So you've always yeah. connected the visuals right. and the art into everything you've yes. done. That's, yeah. that's very remarkable. So tell us now about yourself as a bold color painter. What does life look like as an artist for <sighs> Trisha Faulkner right now? I am in love with art. I it's, it's everything to me. It's my heart. It's my soul. Mm. Um, April 2020 um, came, and after I was a pharmacist for a little bit, and then I, well, for 16 years, I decided to try real estate because I was actually getting pretty burnt out. Mm. But April 2020, when COVID hit, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to do real estate. I really need to dedicate my, my time and talents to, to art. It's my passion. And I got a easel and my canvas and my paints and I hadn't bought paints in years and I thought I would try to paint a picture of my daughter since I could draw a face 
And every time I tried to paint her in flesh tones, I could not do it. And I would just get the red and the purple and wanted to just push all that energy out there and show everybody what she looked like, but still could not cohesively make her look like a, a human. It was just very cartoonish. Um, so I prayed and I prayed and I got online and it was just as if, I don't know, the Google and the Facebook <laughs> heard everything that I was saying to other people. I don't know, but there she was, Charlotte Marshall and Bold School. And I said, yes. And I immediately signed up, didn't even think twice about it, paid wow. the money, got the supply list. It just did change my life. Wow. For, so you were, yeah. you were really struggling with the flesh tones. And then Very much, Charlotte's. Yeah. Charlotte's Bold School is everything but flesh tones. So you must <laughs> exactly. have felt so liberated to start painting <sighs> portraits with everything but flesh tones. Tell me a little Very. bit about that. Uh, yeah, I was just totally liberated. And I, went, I, I was trying to be patient, you know, draw the skulls, draw the muscles, draw the faces, do some pencil work. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I could mix my colors, I was just at awe with the color mixing. And I did my first painting and... Um, I thought, well, I feel like I, I feel like I might be done, and um, I did struggle with color theory. You know, which color goes best with the other, and I would play Charlotte's videos back, and got to the point where I realized I really need to study a lot more color theory. So then I, I did that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that study component because it's really clear you know how to study. You have. Uh, you're a doctor of pharmacy and a, uh, in realty and you know how to study. So what did you bring about uh, into your artwork um, as far as your study habits and your determination and, and your okay. ability to study? What does that merging look like? Um, first, I will say that um, the Bold School community would post things about color and, you know, hey, here's a here's an article about how you use four colors or two colors and here's the Zorin palette. And I think, um, the mentor Axel posted a, an article once on, on colors and Charlotte had mentioned two books to buy. So I just did, I, I searched every website they recommended. I read as much as I could about every color theory I bought the books. And then I would sit down and study my color palettes and, and I would just spend a day mixing and trying to put all the colors together until I finally realized um, with Corey's class, let's, I think it was the challenge that she offered on Bold School, hey, try to do um, just three colors or just do four colors. And that's really when it hit me, you know, less is more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's funny because as a pharmacist, I would tell people less is more. Don't mm -hmm. take the whole pain pill, just start with half. <laughs> very, um, very wise, very wise. <laughs> And so it's true yes. um, with everything in life. Less is really more. You don't yes. have to be, you know, over the top with everything, which I tend to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, well, that comes with a bold character as well. Just uh, <laughs> loving life and <laughs> Love it. the bigger the better. But you learned Absolutely. the less is more lesson. And so what has that helped you do? Just uh, keep your palette simpler and approach it with less brush strokes? Or what does less is more look like for your artwork? Uh, less is more for my artwork to me looks like, uh, it's more cohesive. It feels, uh, less conflicting. Mm. It, it can draw the emotion, uh, of the piece that I want uh, more finitely than I could before. So it, it has really enhanced my artwork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so we've already established that you're a bold character, Trisha Faulkner, and and you have so much adventure in your past with all your moving and even your, your different careers. Can you just tell us a little bit more about okay. being a bold artist and what that means to you and the different steps it takes in your, your artistic um, pursuit to, to be bold and to take risks with your art? So taking risks is me. That's if anyone could say, tell me about <laughs> Trisha, uh, they'd say she is not afraid to try anything. Um, I fully believe, and it may become from my religious bring, upbringing also, that nothing is impossible, that we can mm -hmm. accomplish all, th all things, uh, honestly, through Christ who strengthens us. Mm -hmm. So why be afraid? Just Go for it. Mm -hmm. I do have a saying, and 
I'll tell my daughter all the time, you know, what's my saying? Mm -hmm. My saying is you're already at zero and you can't go less. So trying Mm -hmm. is not going to take you less than zero. Mm -hmm. If you ask a question, no is going to be the answer until you ask the question. It could be yes. So go for it. Um, She happened to come by one day when I was doing a painting of my boxing coach. And I said, I've never used a palette knife before. And I have to show action in this um, scene of my coach punching out his opponent. Mm -hmm. So I literally videoed it, or my daughter videoed it for me, of me saying, I'm really nervous, I'm really scared. Literally, I was shaking, but I'm going to do this. I've got to try it. If I don't try it, I'll never know. And then I just swiped across the palette like... He was uh, going to do the punch and throw the sweat, and it was just like, yes, it worked. It's perfect. And how would I know How would I know if I didn't try it? Yes, yes. And in the show notes, uh, I want to uh-huh. just let all the listeners know that in the show notes, uh, you can find Trisha's Instagram and peruse her Instagram feed, and you will see uh, her boxing coach, the painting, and the video that she just referred to that her daughter took right. of her making those big, bold moves. <laughs> To use That's the palette right. knife for the first time on a painting that, you know, you yep. you didn't want to ruin. You mentioned the word yes. <laughs> you said <laughs> yes. Now, being bold and saying yes for you mm-hmm. are um, one in the same. You've, you've said to me that the biggest mm-hmm. bold, bold move you've ever made was saying yes, I can do it. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit more about the courage it takes to say yes. Uh, I've had a lot of uh, people from Bold School private message me and ask me different questions uh, similar to this. Um, When you're approaching the canvas and you have an idea and the first thing you think of is, I've never done this before, I'm really scared, that's the point. That is the point where you must say yes. You you have to say yes mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you'll never cross that bridge. You'll never find out what's possible if you just stare fear in the face. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got to overcome it, and you've got to just push through it, and so many amazing things can happen. And who cares if it didn't work? You've mm-hmm. learned. It's the journey that you're going through. It's not just... Everything you put on there has to be perfect. That's not true. Everything you put on there is just another process in your steps toward whatever it is you're trying to express that Mm -hmm. you want the world to see. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. go for it. Just say yes. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Just say yes and express. I love how you just tied expression (laughs) right into there um, in what you were just saying. And and that almost has a little ring of its own. Say yes and express. (laughs) That's right. I love that. I love that. So, uh, so Trisha, what is the, um, the boldest move that you ever made that I know that, that you said that saying yes was the boldest move, but Mm -hmm. in your, let's say decisions as an artist and, and taking, taking steps to change your life, to pursue art, what is the boldest move you've made in that realm? Well, I stopped working as a pharmacist. I retired my real estate license and I just, I have dedicated all of my time to art and showing the world what God wants me to show the world. And I have zero regrets. That is an incredible move to make. It's been amazing. How has that felt? How is it? How, I mean, you are a bold person that, that sounds fearless, but Mm -hmm. truly there must still be times that, that you have to push through the fear. And so how has that been? Uh, it's been, like I said, a journey. Everything is a journey. When I, when I first started and posted my work on social media, I was really shocked how many people tried to get me to do a commission for them. And I said, sure. Well, it started off, um, that I realized I have to be a part of the person in order to express them emotionally with color. Mm -hmm. I have typically taken all of my photographs and been a part of the process of the person that I'm going to paint, or I know them intimately like my child or my husband. And I'm thinking, well, this is how they are. And this is their personality, or this is what happened when I took the photo and we were all in this unity. And I know exactly the behavior and what color should should be expressed. 
So commissions became quite the challenge for me. I had to uh, make a point of saying, I will not be able to do your commission until you talk to me on the phone or send me an extensive uh, note about what's this person like. What Tell me a story about the person. Tell me some things that happened in your life that you interacted with this person and how that made you feel. And then I was able to express that person in the light and the colors that Bold School allows. So it was a quite the journey. Well, what I hear in that is your desire to not only paint the shapes and the values that you see in a reference photo, but to capture the essence, the emotion, the intimacy with the subject matter and the the subject person. And I I love that. And I love it when the artist engages their heart and emotions into wanting to render that portrait with such passion and feeling. So so good for you, Trisha. I love that. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. So do you have any tips on, um, besides hearing a story about the subject or getting to know them, do you have any other tips on how to render that emotional, uh, connect, connective kind of portrait? Um, I do focus a lot on the eyes. I do need the photograph that will uh, express their emotion. Uh, the smile and say cheese photos, I typically refuse to do those mm-hmm. commissions. Mm-hmm. But um, I will never forget when a lot of the bold school students will post that they'll say, you know, something is missing, something's not right. And what I'll never forget is Sharla saying in her course, you know, always put a little tiny dot of most of the colors that you've used in your painting into the iris of the eye. Um, and it actually will really enhance the emotion of the piece. And uh, so that's one tip I will say that I got from Charlotte. And that's what I always put mm-hmm. in the, the portraits. Mm-hmm. And people yes. will say to me, how did you make their eyes look so vibrant? And I'm like, oh, it's just what I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but mm-hmm. Charlotte's definitely the one who taught me that. Yes. And for any of our watchers on YouTube and listeners on the audio apps, if you want to know more about that, if you're listening and you haven't taken Bold Color Boot Camp or any of the courses at Bold School, and you want to know more about the way Charlotte teaches and tips just like that one, do check out boldschool.com. That is where and how Trisha learned these tips that she's that she's said are have been transformational to her style of painting. And so I just wanted to throw that in there because some listeners won't have taken the class and, and they'll think, oh wow, <laughs> where can I learn that? So Bold School was very transformational for you, Trisha. Can you tell us a little bit more? You said that um, it sounded like at the start of the pandemic, you came across Sharla online and signed up right away. And, but it's been a journey with that community. Mm-hmm. It has been. Um, I have made some really great friends through Bold School. Uh, people can reach out to me whenever they feel like it on Messenger. I ask for advice on Messenger if I'm debating ideas. Um, it's just a really good source for encouragement Another thing that uh, we do is we always try to give really positive feedback. Um, it may not be your best, but we'll do our best to tell you what's good about it and what we think we see, uh, even though sometimes we aren't the artist who's, who's um, got the same story that they're telling, we can definitely give feedback. And I definitely appreciate the feedback that I get from the mentors and the, and the fellow students from Bold School. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's such a sense of community. And yep. I, I know that community plays such a role in giving us courage and confidence as artists. And True. so there's a lot of different ways we can draw on community, the community around us, our family, friends, uh, people in our, our city or neighboring cities, art clubs. But um, if you could just tell us a little bit about that for you of how your community in general, bold school and otherwise give you courage, even though we know you're already bold. (laughs) I'm pretty bold. There's not much I won't, there's not much I won't try. Uh, Yeah. The bold school community is fantastic because um, every month we have monthly challenges. You can participate or not, but it gives the artists something to think about that the Mm -hmm. mentors put out there for us to work on. Um, I think we feed off of each other's energy for example, um, 
Charlotte has the chorus on painting the wild, which is wild animals. Mm -hmm. And it's so inspiring to see her beautiful artwork and the artwork of others and that encouragement. And there's a young lady that you interviewed who's a zoologist and she paints zoo animals and it's just fascinating. So I've actually gone out and taken pictures of different animals and wildlife just because I'm, that's going to be something I do soon. You know, I can't wait to paint the butterfly that (laughs) that I've captured. So, uh, yeah, the community is fantastic. Um, if it weren't for the community at Bold School, it, it wouldn't be the same. So it's really important to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. I'm very thankful for it as well. I find that community, yes, as I mentioned already, it it um, rallies around us and gives us courage and helps us take the steps. And that is one of the reasons, one of the main reasons we have this podcast is to create a sense of community where those watching and listening are they're in some ways just listening in on our conversation trisha but yet (laughs) it is giving them uh fuel inspiration and the confidence that you have the boldness that you have rubs off (laughs) even through this (laughs) podcast it just rubs off it gives others the courage to say hey Mm -hmm. i hear trisha faulkner say I can say yes, I can do all things, I can face the fear, I can step out and be bold, and I can join a community and be part of Bold School and have that kind of feedback and support and fit in. And that's exactly what the message that we want to share is that you're not alone. (laughs) Not alone. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You're not alone. It's, It's really important. And Charlotte and I have said several times in different aspects of our interviewing, I think even in the podcast trailer that's on boldschool.com that we said how as introverts, often artists are introverts, we can spend a lot of alone time in the studio and it's so mm-hmm. important to come out of that cave and connect. And and that is part of the role of Bold Artist Podcast as well is to create that connection. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so Trisha, do you have you've already shared so much encouragement. You've already shared, um, food for thought and, and these sort of tips on being bold and stepping out. But do you have another word of encouragement for artists who are just looking for their footing? Perhaps they're not bold by nature as you are, and they're more timid (laughs) and hesitant. And the ones that, that, they're actually terrified. (laughs) They're terrified (laughs) to show their art. They're terrified to step out. Uh, What would you share with them today? I uh, was that person. I was very terrified to share my art when I was a child. Mm. Um, I was afraid my parents would know how I really felt about things. It was my Mm. way of uh, coping with the world and the sadness sometimes that I felt. Um, But um, once you just as I said, say yes, uh, you've got to push through, you've got to try. Um, it is not something that uh, is that complicated. It really is, is simple. Just start, you know, just getting started. Sometimes you can sit there and stare and you're afraid you're going to mess it up. What are you going to mess up? It's paint, paint, up, paint over it. <laughs> just do it again. I have one canvas I've probably painted over six times. Um, mm-hmm. I might post it, then I change my mind and I don't like it and I'll do something else. So that's what cameras are for. Take a, take an iPhone photo of it, but, um, uh, just, just get through the, get through the modules buy the program. It is so worth it. Mm. Uh, you can play it back for life. You can, you can get on that community. Other people will help encourage you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a fantastic, uh, relationship that we have with everyone on Bold School. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing mm-hmm. that and for encouraging us all today. And I want to just rewind a little bit in our interview. uh, In in the beginning, you touched a little bit on your struggle with skin tone Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. your study of color theory. And I would like to go back to that before we close and just talk a little bit about color theory and your approach to color. Uh, You did talk about simplifying your palette, but I know there's more. There's more to it than that. And so uh, what can you share with us today about your love for color and how you're approaching color right now? When I did start, I just uh, would go buy paint out of the tube and start mixing colors and just hope that it worked out. Mm. Uh, I was spending hours on those types of artwork and not getting anywhere, just kind of going around in circles and 
you know, heart palpitations, sweating a little bit. I mean, I'm bold, but we all have those feelings. We all go through those traumatizing feelings of, oh, it's, you know, I've just ruined this. Mm -hmm. But get the book. I actually paint with my color wheel at my feet so that I can look down Mm -hmm. at the color wheel Mm -hmm. and constantly remind myself of, you know, what's complimentary, what's next to each other. Uh, Read online. Get on there yourself. Look it up. Go to the art store. I often uh, sign up for um, Golden Paints has seminars, and they have artists, and they'll teach you online for $20 for two hours once or twice a week. Wow. So you can go to Golden Paints and get on those uh, art classes. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, so I've taken a lot of initiative to learn. Uh, knowledge is actually peace. Mm-hmm. The more you know, the more calm that you'll feel about what you're doing with your artwork, the more educated you are. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm still not anywhere near the educated uh, that I need to be in art, but I try. Yeah, there's no wrong. I mean, there is no... There's no right or wrong in art, and I remember when I first started, I wanted someone to tell me, "Well, what's wrong with it? What do you think I could, you know, what do you think I could fix?" And artists will tell you, "You could fix this, or you could fix that." But there are some artists with degrees out there who will say, and who have told me, uh, "Your art is ridiculous. That's that's not a that's not an art form. You're just making things up." <laughs> but you know what I say? <laughs> yeah, I'm making it up. Good yeah. for me. I'm gonna do what I feel like I want to do. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to be everybody else. I there's no reason to be somebody else. Mm-hmm. So you be you out there. <laughs> yes, yes, and that's part of creativity. The beauty of creativity yeah. is making it up and using right. your imagination and experimenting. And that's it. And yet, um, and I always say there's there's a beautiful balance between practice and play and study and inspiration. And True. so what you said, you, you just said it also beautifully in what you just shared, because um, you said knowledge is peace. And so mm-hmm. learning and, and studying, we've talked about the study of, of color, but studying brings that knowledge, which brings the peace. But you also share how like in the beginning of it all, you were just mixing colors and hoping it turned out That's right. <laughs> and then disappointed if it didn't turn out and, That's and, right too much experimenting perhaps. And so there's this beautiful merge and weaving together of experiment and inspiration with the knowledge and the study. And it's like this beautiful merge where it kind of comes together. Correct. And, and I love that. I love seeing art when artists bring that balance. Like they're not afraid to play and try things and make it up. <laughs> and at the same time, <laughs> they're diligent to study and grow and learn and kind of keep that balance on both sides. And also what really stood out to me is you said you put the color wheel at your feet. So I always keep a color wheel on the wall. And okay. what is what is the benefit of the, like, what's the trick with keeping it at your feet? I got to know this. Okay, well, maybe it's because I have a small room that I call my studio. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, I call it my office. I didn't call it my studio until I felt really confident. I just felt like, I can't call my office my studio. I'm not really an artist, but I am. It's my studio. Darn it, it is. (laughs) I keep it at my feet because I don't have a lot of space. And um, (laughs) I keep the brushes I have not used next to it at my feet. (laughs) Because I'll end up using 40 brushes. And I'm like, what brush did I use? And why do I need 40 brushes? I really just need three. So yeah. Well, I love learning all these little (laughs) tips of the trade because uh, in one of our episodes, Luz D. Rivera shared how she actually paints her own color wheel with all the colors that she has available. So she oh, makes nice. her own color wheels. <laughs> and then, and I, I thought that was fascinating and a really great idea. And then that now is. I'm thinking maybe I need to find the place <laughs> for the color wheel that, you know, is where I'm naturally looking. <laughs> Exactly. Rather than trying to turn my head and look at the color wheel. Well, how many times do you drop something and you've got to look down and there's a color wheel? Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Good idea. So I have yet to see an artist with the color wheel tattooed on their hand. Oh, okay. Maybe we should all have a bold school tattoo. Oh, you're a member? We can start that. I'll 
run that past Charlotte later. Today. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I love this. I'm going to be thinking a lot about knowledge is peace and okay. saying yes to be bold. I love what you've shared and imparted into our community and our listeners and watchers today. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a joy. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for being on the show. We have so loved seeing you grow in the community and we just wish you all the best in your artwork, Trisha. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. You guys have a great day. Thanks for being here with us today. The Bold Artist Podcast can be found on YouTube, the Bold School channel, and on audio apps, look for Bold Artist Podcast. And don't forget, we would love to hear from you. So you can ask questions, offer topic ideas, and just join in the conversation by going to Instagram at Bold Artist Podcast. Coming up in the next few episodes, we have some really interesting artists that go to deep levels of conversation. We are so excited to keep giving artists voices through the Bold Artist Podcast. Until next episode, keep creating.